back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a Q&A and then I'm also going to be wrapping all of the gifts that I need to wrap right now. If you guys are new to my channel, my name's Caitlin and my daughter is Scarlett. She's four years old and then I am like halfway married to my ex-husband boyfriend. I honestly never know what to call him, but um, Ty. <laughs> We're just gonna go with Ty. It's a long story, but I've shared our journey on my channel. Anyways, that's always an awkward um, conversation starter. So let's just go ahead and move on into the video. Also, I'm having like a really weird issue right now, and I don't know if I pulled something to the gym or what. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, because I was there yesterday. But every time I breathe, like take a deep breath in, I have this really bad shoulder pain. Like a stabbing pain in my shoulder and like lower neck. And I'm struggling but because of that I just slept awful last night and I could not get comfortable so I'm on the struggle bus today okay so the first question somebody is asking is what um, are all of our love languages so if you guys are not familiar with what the love languages are they are acts of service receiving gifts words of affirmation physical touch and a missing one. Oh, quality time so those are the five love languages and you can actually um, take like a quiz online but I've actually read the book. When Ty and I were struggling in our marriage, that is like one of the first books that I read. Um, it was a couple years ago and it was actually really interesting. And at the time I thought my love language was quality time, but I like since then I think I've determined that that is not my love language. And my love language is actually acts of service. I really appreciate when Ty takes the time out of his day to do something for me that helps me out or just lets me know that he's thinking of me that is 100 percent my love language so for ty his love language we've determined is 100 percent uh receiving gifts <laughs> and he just loves it when i like bring home something for him or it could be so small it could be like a soda from mcdonald's or something he just loves it when i have like some kind of gift for him and that, honestly that really complements our love languages because i love giving gifts and he loves receiving gifts for me i like receiving gifts like who doesn't but i also don't like receiving gifts if i don't have a gift to give you if that makes sense so it really works out that he likes to receive and i like to give for scarlet i have no idea what her love language is uh probably quality time she loves to be around me she loves to do things with me she loves to have girls days is what we call it um so maybe quality time but i think a love language is just something that really adapts with you um as you mature in my opinion because my love language is definitely not the same as it was five years ago oh my gosh i just realized i forgot to show you guys what i got scarred uh, I'll put a picture of it up here on the screen because I cannot get this out now, but it's a poly pocket. Okay, so the next question this girl's at basically asking what is something that you said you would never do as a mom or let your kids do as a mom, but they do now. It's definitely like a screen time thing. I was always, my thought process was uh, no TV like when you're going to bed. I didn't want Scarlett being one of those kids who takes her iPad to a restaurant or something like that. That is our saving grace these days. Let's be honest. Okay, the next gift I got Scarlett is this mermaid. It's a Barbie Dreamtopia and it's a Sparkle Lights mermaid. And you can actually put her in the water. What's your favorite thing to purchase for yourself? Um, probably, I don't know, some kind of like pampering, whether it's getting my hair done or getting my nails done or something like that. What's your ideal date night? What's ties? Um, I would say just something chill. We're definitely like chill people like hey, let's go see a movie Which is something we really miss doing um, Even though I'm not a huge movie person like I don't watch movies very often. I love going to the movie theater I love to eat so some kind of restaurant some kind of like food experience I feel like I'm a pretty chill person and I'm down for whatever um, So if Ty was like hey, like let's go to a concert. Let's go to a comedy club. I would be totally down We used to do comedy clubs a lot and I actually really miss doing that. That's like one thing Ty and I have always loved to do together was go to comedy clubs. When people ask you what you do for a living, how do you answer? So it's always a conversation starter because people don't necessarily like understand that what I do on the internet, like social media stuff is a full-time job and I totally understand because I never understood it either. So I get where they're coming from. So usually when somebody says like, what do you do for work? Uh, I just tell them I stay home with my daughter and I work off of social media and then usually they're like Oh, what do you do on social media that kind of thing? Um, and then I say I have a YouTube channel and then they're like, what do you do on your YouTube channel? And I usually just tell them I 
post videos of lifestyle content. So cooking, cleaning, uh, motherhood, that kind of stuff. But I think it's a fair question because like I said, when I first started out on YouTube, on the internet, I had no idea that you could make money or this could be a full-time job. I had no idea. So totally understand where people are coming from when they ask. Three names for each gender you love but won't be using. Ooh, I love that. For girls, I love, I have a couple and I know we definitely won't be using these because Ty's not a fan. And also, if we have another girl, uh, it'll be an S name because I, I don't know, I just envision us having two S names if it's a girl. The first name is Lottie, L-O-T-T-I-E, and I think it's just such a cute name. The second name is Opal. I love the name Opal. I think it's beautiful. The third name is Amelia. I think that is also a beautiful name. So those are three girls' names that um, we definitely won't be using. Our boy name is a family name. Um, it's been decided since before I even knew Ty. <laughs> so we have a boy, it's already set in stone. Um, and like I said, it's a family name. And to be honest, I don't even know any other boys' names that I love. I haven't even thought about it because we already know our boy names, so I never like think about other boy names. So sorry guys. So speaking of the baby topic, when do you plan to have your next baby? We're really hoping that we're able to do that next year. So hopefully we are blessed with that um, next year. Do you and Ty exchange gifts? Um, I kind of talked about this in one of my last vlogs. And yes, we do. We're just really bad at waiting. So he has surprised me with the ice machine. Um, it's like a pebble ice machine. It makes uh, like the Sonic ice. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like the little tiny ice cubes. Love it. I'm so excited. I thought it was so sweet of him because when I was pregnant, I craved that ice. So now I'm prepared for pregnancy uh, eventually when that time comes. But uh, yeah, I thought that was so awesome he did that. But let's be honest, he loves it too. Um, and then for Ty, I already told you guys this, but I got him a gun safe from Liberty Safes. It's so cool. And then I also got him a soda stream and the soda stream is amazing. Like that's been one of my favorite gifts I've gotten him in a long time. So if you need a last minute gift, the soda stream, I think it's on sale at Target right now for like 70 ish dollars and it's an awesome gift. Highly, highly recommend it. Okay, this next gift is something Scarlett really, really wanted. It's the present pets. So basically you open it and there's like one of these puppies inside it. It's like a surprise and she loves the surprise toys and I think it walks or something or like, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it does to be honest. Um, but I know it like makes noise and moves its feet and stuff. It says 100 plus sounds and actions. And I got it on sale at Target. I think I got it for like $39. Originally it's around 50. So I was pretty pumped to find this on sale. What age was the hardest for Scarlett? I'm still in the newborn phase and mama is tired. I will say you forget how tired you were when you have a newborn. I, it's really hard for me to remember those days. I honestly feel like the age is like three to four, like where she's at now is wonderful don't get me wrong but it's also really hard because her emotions are so big and she's still trying to identify how to cope with those emotions and dealing with some of those big emotions sometimes can be it can lead to long days and um, lots of consistency with parenting on my part and ty's part so i would definitely say this age is actually the most challenging for us uh she was an easy easy newborn she was an easy baby for the most part we had like a lot of medical things we had to deal with but overall she was a happy easy good sleeper baby so so for us it's like the older toddler years but i know every child's different somebody asked how do you stay so motivated and organized and still take time to work out so the holiday season, wait, is that good? So one thing I will say is the holiday season is always, always difficult um, to keep up with my workout routine. But it's also so important for me to um, keep up with my gym routine because I notice a huge difference in my mental health and um, I notice a huge difference in just like my overall like mental state if I'm not working out, especially around the holidays. Holidays are always um, a little hard sometimes for lots of people. December is always kind of a heavy month for us. Um, we just have a lot going on and we've had some losses and stuff like that. So keeping up with my gym routine during the holidays is something I have to force myself to do and just make time for. No excuses, you just have to do it. I think the main thing is with working out, you just have to commit and you just have to not think twice about it and just do it. Block it out of your mind, get your gym shoes on, go. 
Don't think twice about it. Don't procrastinate, get dressed and leave. Just get there. The hardest part, in my opinion, is just getting out the door and committing to actually getting to the gym or if you're working out at your house or outside or something, just go straight there. Wake up, go straight there. Um, don't do anything in between because that's when you start to procrast procrastinate. Somebody asked what I'm doing for exercising right now. I'm doing open fit like one to two times a week. And then I go to my like hit classes twice a week. That's all I can commit to right now, except next week we're going to do three days because Scarlett's on Christmas break. How do you and Ty handle finances thought on joint accounts or splitting the bills? Um, I really think it just like, I don't think there's any wrong way to do it. I think it just depends on your situation. For us, um, we've done both. When we were previously married, we had a joint bank account and now we have split bank accounts. I make my own money, he makes his own money. We um, split bills, but I think that's probably gonna change because it's honestly more difficult to pay bills this way. But you just have to do what's right for you, like whatever works for you. Honestly, we'd probably have a joint bank account or just being kinda lazy and haven't um, set it up yet. <laughs> Somebody asked where was I born? I was born in Topeka, Kansas. That is where I grew up. This present is wrapped just so poorly. <laughs> We're just gonna go with it. Um, this person asked tips for uh, having a birthday and Christmas so close together. I've talked about this and it's always hard this time of year. Oh, it's, loud. it's always hard this time of year because I feel like we're so overloaded with gifts for Scarlett because her birthday and Christmas. However, I don't wanna dismiss her birthday and I want her to still get gifts for her birthday like I normally would and still get gifts for Christmas like I normally would. So mm, it might be a lot. Maybe we should celebrate half birthday in the future. I don't know. But one thing I want to do to her birthday next year, um, and I wish I would have done it this year. I just, I didn't think about it. But one thing I want to do next year at her birthday party, instead of our friends bringing gifts for her, I want, and hopefully like Scarlett will be on board. Um, and I think she will be, and it'll be a good lesson, but I want everybody to bring a gift that we can donate. But I wanna grab like the angel tags from, um, like they do these trees here. I don't know if they do those everywhere, but um, here in the air area, they have these angel trees where you can take a tag and then pick a gift and then um, you can buy a gift for that child. And for her birthday, I really want to take those angel tags and give those out to like the guests who are coming. And instead of bringing a gift for Scarlett, I want them to bring a gift for um, whatever is on that angel tag. So I think it'd be a really good lesson for Scarlett. She'll probably understand it a little bit more next year. She'll be turning five. So I'm hoping we can do that next year and set that up. I think it would just be so wonderful and it'd be a great um, example to set for Scarlett and um, a great lesson to learn too. She'll still get birthday presents from um, family and then from Ty and I, but I think we could do like some kind of um, thing like that for her birthday. Kind of random for me to throw that out there, but I just like thought about that the other day and I'm like, why didn't we do that? Um, but there's always next year and I think we'll do that next year. Okay, I think this video is gonna get way too long. So I'm gonna quickly just share the rest of the items that I got Scarlett for her for Christmas, not her birthday. And then I'll share our stocking items and then I'll answer a few more questions too. This is something I'm really excited to give her because I think it's gonna be really fun. It's the color reveal Barbies. So basically you dip it in water and it reveals what Barbie you got. So she's really into Barbies right now, if you can't tell. Um, so I think that's really fun. She's getting these little Cabbage Patch kids. These were actually sent over um, by Cabbage Patch. So I wanted to just include these with um, her Christmas presents. She really likes babies right now. So these cute little uh, Cabbage Patch kids are going to be perfect. So I bought this little rainbow um, because I was going to paint it myself and use it as some decor in her room. But my girlfriend Cindy ended up sending over a rainbow just like this, a little smaller from her shop, Your Little Dove. And it was perfect for Scarlett's room. So I had no need to paint this anymore. So I had this random rainbow that I thought I'd just include in Scarlett's Christmas presents. So um, we'll just put it in the playroom or something, but it's cute. It's like the stackable rainbows. I got it from Amazon. And then for Scarlett's big gift, which you can probably see back here, it is this um, Schwinn bike. It is so cute. So here's what it looks like. It's like pink and orange, has training wheels. Uh, she has been ready for a big girl bike for a while. We have just like a tiny tricycle right now. Um, but we wanted to wait until Christmas. So this was our big gift to her. Along with the bike, I needed to get her a new helmet because her helmet is a little small on her head. So I just grabbed this from um, Amazon is where I got it. It's just a pink helmet. And then I wanted to get her a little basket too to put on her bike. 
so she's gonna be so excited she has no idea it's coming she hasn't asked for it or anything um, so it will be quite the surprise okay and then my tip for gift wrapping by the way if you have boxes put your gifts for your kids in the boxes because it's just easier to wrap and it's kind of fun because they look bigger than what they actually are um, but this is just a little stroller I think it was like 10 bucks at Target her other stroller broke and she's been asking for a stroller so it's the perfectly cute brand. Okay, I thought I'd share really fast what I'm putting in Scarlett's stocking, but we'll start over here. I got her these Kinder Eggs because she loves Kinder Eggs. They're definitely one of her favorite candies. She saw this at H&M when I was there a couple of months ago, and it's a sleep mask, and it's so cute. She wanted it so badly, so I was able to sneak it and buy it, and she's gonna be so excited about that. I got her some Crayola crayons, and then I got her these um, that are actually bandages. So I thought those were fun. I found them in the Target dollar section. I I found this little winter styled Barbie um, at Target. I thought that was really cute to add into her stocking. She loves Barbie. I got her a new toothbrush. It's something I always do for her stocking. And I found the Anna one. This stuff's left over from her goodie bags from her birthday party. So I thought I would just add these into her stocking. There's some chapsticks and then a little sticker pad. These are a French fry bath bomb set from Target. Um, some hand sanitizer. She's really been wanting some scissors, so I found a pair of scissors for her. Um, and then I also got her a lip gloss set. This is extra Play-Doh from her birthday again. Uh, this little locket is so cute. She's been wanting a locket, and this opens up. Let me see if I can open it one-handed. Yeah, this opens up just like this, and she's gonna think that's the coolest thing. So I was really excited to find that at Target. I got her some coal because I think that's just fun to get in your stocking. My mom did that a lot. And then I always do like things she needs in her stocking. So some new undies, a new mask. It has all the princesses on it. And then um, just some new socks. And I think that's everything. So yes, I forgot. There's two things that I ordered her on Amazon, um, including that uh, cutting book. It's called the scissors skills book. I think each page has like different ways that you can use the scissors and it really works on like your hand eye coordination and those motor skills that she needs to develop. And then the other thing she's been asking for is a yo-yo. So I totally forgot about this too. I got her a yo-yo, which again, I'll put it here on the screen. I also want to mention Scarlett's like really into like coloring and play stuff, um, Play-Doh, sensory stuff. Like she loves to color and that's what I told like all of our friends to get her for her birthday. So she got a ton of that stuff for her birthday, which is why I haven't gotten her anything like that for Christmas. So she got a lot of books and she got a lot of like play activity kits, that kind of stuff. Otherwise I'd probably be getting her a few things like that for Christmas too. This is Indy's stocking. I still need to get him a few more things. I thought, thought I had more, but um, maybe a few more toys. He just destroys his toys so fast and I have to be careful because he eats fuzz off of toys and then it's just not good for him. So I'm very picky about the toys that I get him. Anyways, this is his stocking. It's from Target, so cute. He's getting a new collar, it's just a little striped collar. Got him this little rope toy, which will be the perfect toy because I don't think he can really tear stuff off of this. Um, it's like a tug of war toy. I got him these gingerbread flavored greenies and then a pack of balls. So he's definitely gonna love these. And this is what I got for Ty for his stocking. He doesn't know he's getting this stuff. This has like been the only secret I've kept. <laughs> I still need to grab him some candy. He definitely is a candy lover. So I'm gonna get him some more candy, but I got him a Quip toothbrush. You guys um, have seen me talk about this before. I love mine, so I wanted to get him one. This is just like the slate colored one. And I got him some toothpaste some Orbit gum. This is a um, like a men care set by Dove. It has shampoo and conditioner. Uh, I think it's a body wash and then a deodorant. And this is everything he uses. And then I kind of got this for me, kind of got this for him. We'll have to play it together, but it's a um, like a game. It's kind of like Cards Against Humanity. So I thought that would be fun for us for like when we have people over. Okay, sorry this video is all over the place. I'm gonna answer a few more questions now before I end this video. And then I have to finish wrapping all of this. So. Let's jump on in. Do you have another job besides YouTube and social media? I do not. This is my full-time job. What kind of dog is Indy? He's a multi-poo. Indy! He is being rude. How long do you see yourself living in your home for future plans? Uh, our plan is probably like three to five years we'll be here. Our goal is to keep this house and rent it out. This is the perfect house to rent out. So that's our goal. Are you glad you separated from Ty even though you are back together now? 100% like we say this all the time. We wouldn't be here today had we not divorced, had we not separated, had we not had that year apart where we were able to really like dig deep into ourselves and find ourselves and figure out what was important. Um, that time was 100% needed for us to be in the good place that we are today. When you have another baby, will you do baby led weaning again? 
Um, I can't answer that, I guess. I think it just depends on the baby. I would like to. I think baby led weaning's wonderful. That's what we did with Scarlett. She was never really interested in pureed food. She was interested in actual, like, real food. And even if I made purees, she just was not having it. She did not like it. She did not like the texture. And still to this day, she does not like textures of foods like that. She's not an applesauce fan. Um, sometimes she'll do it, but she's not a huge applesauce fan. She's not, like, a banana fan. She's not, um, like, a like something creamy and textured like that, she cannot do. What are you doing for Christmas? We'll be staying in Arizona this year. Typically we travel to Kansas, but we're trying to get on an every other year schedule so we can spend Christmas with Ty's family one year and then spend Christmas with my family the next year. So next year we'll go to Kansas. Will you ever come to Aruba? I would love to go visit Aruba. <laughs> I'd love to. What is Scarlett's most wanted gift this season? It's a yo-yo. That's what she said at school. That's what she wrote down on her wish list for Santa when they did it at school. Would you ever consider dyeing your hair dark brown? I did it once when I was in high school and it was not good. I'm way too pale of a person to have dark hair. So it just was not a good fit for me. Did you have to sleep train Scarlett? If so, at what age? We never sleep trained her because we set up um, like healthy sleep habits from the beginning. Uh, my cousin is taking care of babies on Instagram. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. I think a lot of people are. She's very well known in the mom community. Kara's amazing and she helped us with like from the beginning every step of the way and I cannot recommend her enough if you have a newborn or if you're struggling getting your baby to sleep. She's amazing. Highly recommend following her. She is not only amazing at what she does but she is genuinely the most like the sweetest and kindest person in the world. You guys will love Kara so go follow her. How did you get into a healthy lifestyle after having kids? I was honestly living a healthy lifestyle before having kids and then I continued that into my pregnancy and then it kind of carried over um, after having Scarlett, although it's never been perfect at all. I just do what I can and um, that is what's best is what I can, doing what I can, even a little bit, even just making healthy choices throughout the day or getting myself to the gym once a week or whatever that may be. It's definitely not a perfect journey, but I've always prioritized my health and my fitness clear back to um, gosh, I mean high school, college. I cheered in college, so we had like a pretty tight um, like exercise plan, I guess. Um, and I've just always lived a very active lifestyle. I've always enjoyed it. But I'd say if you're one of those people who does not and are wanting to get to be healthier and wanting to be more active, you just have to start. Figure out what you want to do, figure out what type of exercise you like and commit and start. And that is the hardest part is committing. It takes 21 days in my opinion to create a habit. So do whatever you're doing for 21 days and instill that into your routine and I guarantee you're gonna feel better. I guarantee you're gonna see results and I guarantee you're gonna actually want to do it. When did your career take off and would you ever choose to be the solo income? Uh, I would say I really started taking this more seriously um, towards the end of my marriage because I knew I didn't want Scarlett's life to be incredibly disrupted through the divorce and I wanted to be able to still stay home with her and I didn't want to have to like go back to a nine to five job or anything like that. I didn't want that for her. I want it to be as smooth of a transition as possible and I am so grateful that it was. So that is when I like went full time I guess with YouTube and, and started really relying on um, my income and in this line of work the harder you work usually it pays off so um, Thankfully it did work out would I ever choose to be the solo income even though we could just have me be the solo income for my family I don't think we ever will because Ty needs that um, Like he he could never he needs his own thing. He needs his own job He needs his own income and I love that about him. I respect that so much I think that's great that he has the drive and the want to um you know, do his own thing and work, but you never know what the future holds. So um, who knows? But as of now, I think we're very content with where I'm at with my job and where he's at with his job. Hi buddy, what's stuck in your fur? Okay, there's like something stuck on his mouth, but somebody asked how old Indy is and he is five years old. And today he has to go to the vet and get updated on his shots and he's getting groomed. So say goodbye to this fluffy puppy. Love you buddy. What is the most difficult part of your job? 100% um, the fact that it never ends. You don't get days off because you're constantly, like your mind's always working. You are responding to emails on Instagram, something. Like it's it's part of your everyday life. Like social media to me, I'd be on it anyways. And so now that social media is also my job, it's hard for me to um, shut it off because 
it's something I enjoy like to do in my free time but it's also my job when you are doing this kind of work you're always thinking about what you need to do you're always thinking about video ideas um, for me at least that's what I do I always like there's always something in my head thinking about oh my gosh like this would be really fun to include in a video there's always like a DM that comes through or an email or something like that it's an everyday thing you don't get days off unless you force yourself to put your phone away and shut your computer you don't get days off guys there's so many amazing questions on here I wish I could answer every single one of these somebody says are you truly happy to have YouTube as a job or wish you worked at eight to four and then somebody says do you ever think you'd go back to working like an eight to five job working for yourself is amazing you get to create your own schedule you get to stay home with your daughter you get to do whatever you want during the day and plan out your day accordingly it is honestly a dream and it's a dream I never thought I'd be living working for somebody else making somebody else money making another company money um, that I have no desire to ever do that again ever some people want that stability some people want that eight to five and then shut it off when they get home some people like that and there's nothing wrong with that but for me personally seeing both sides like dipping my toes into both sides I worked um, prior as a case manager for a behavioral health agency prior to YouTube uh, I worked I mean, I worked like nine to five, but some days it was longer. It, it honestly just depends on what was going on. Sometimes it was weekends. It honestly just depends on what was going on with my kids. But with that job, I had no way to grow. Uh, I was gonna be stuck at the same pay for ever, basically <laughs> forever, unless I went back to school and there was just no growth. And I'm the kind of person who very much thrives off of growth and I need to be able to see um, like a return for my work. So I need to, Sorry, my ice maker's loud. The reward is what pushes me to be better. Um, knowing that I'm working for something that is going to pay off is what pushes me to be better. And honestly, that's why working for myself is so good for me personally, because I have the drive and the mindset to um, work harder to see that return. Not everybody's like that and that's okay too. I'm just trying to explain how my head works and how my mind works and my mindset, I guess. I am so grateful to be able to work solely for myself and be my own boss and create my own hours and be there with Scarlett every step of the day. Obviously, you never know what the future holds, but I can confidently say that if something, like if I didn't want to do YouTube anymore, I have other avenues that I could take and other jobs that I could do for myself that I know could be successful as well. I don't have enough time or energy to do everything I want to do because I, I just can't. I have to focus on one thing, and right now that's YouTube. But if something wasn't to work out with YouTube, I have backup plans, I guess, if that makes sense. And my backup plans do not consist of going back to a nine to five job but I could if I wanted to, but I I don't have the desire to do that, I guess, if that makes sense. And then this question kind of goes along with what I was just talking about. This person asked if I went to college, and I did. I went to school for psychology. Um, I got a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and a minor in Criminal Justice. I graduated in 2014, um, and then I worked for two years as a case manager for kids who had intensive behavioral health needs. Uh, I basically uh, set up services for them um, and evaluated their needs and um, yeah it was very it's a very challenging job um, but I'm really glad I did it I feel like it opened my eyes to a lot I grew up in a bubble let me just say that I grew up in a bubble in a small town Kansas town 100% grew up in a bubble I was so naive jumping into um, like living in a big city and working in a big city and so that job really helped expand my mind and it taught me a lot so I am forever grateful for that job I don't want to do it again but I'm forever grateful <laughs> you guys there is seriously so many questions I'm so sorry I'm not gonna be able to answer all of these because my battery's gonna die I gotta go pick up Scarlett from school and I gotta really fast wrap these presents so thank you guys for watching today's video and seeing what I got Scarlett for Christmas listening to my Q&A um, stocking stuffers, all of that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it gave you some ideas if you have any like last minute Christmas shopping to do too. I'm gonna have everything linked down below in case you guys saw something that you uh, want to Amazon Prime really fast. I know Christmas is in like a week, but uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. I hope you have a happy holiday and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. <laughs>